Okay, so I will call the Town of Essex Select Board special meeting for Thursday, May 26, 2022 to order. Um, are there any agenda additions or changes from staff? From staff. Okay, any request, agenda request, change requests from board members? No. Okay, um, then let's move on to uh, public to be heard. This is a period of the agenda where folks who are in attendance can speak to the board on, on topics which are not on the agenda. Um, if you'd like to speak during public to be heard, uh, raise your hand in the, um, in the Zoom uh, application or um, turn your camera on and wave your hand uh, if you don't uh, have that capability. Um, uh, if you'd like to speak to the board, please be brief, please be civil, um, address your remark remarks to me as a select board chair. And uh, um, so let's see, I got to make sure I can see all participants here. Any public comment during public to be heard? I don't see any hands up. So let's go on to our first business item, our only business item, uh, discussion and potential action about filling a vacancy on the Essex Westward School Board. Um, I brought this up briefly during our last meeting, um, during uh, uh, part, as part of the reading file, because it was kind of short notice. We didn't have, we, we uh, had uh, fairly recently at that point learned that there was a, um, a vacancy on the school board and um, Aaron uh, fortunately remembered that there's some requirements uh, associated with the, with uh, interacting with the select board around that. Um, so um, actually she and I were at a, a cancer, cancer patient uh, treatment, uh, I forget the name of the association, Aaron. Oh, Cancer Patient Support Foundation. Um, right. Yep, anniversary yep. dinner. Yeah, so we were at a fundraiser and uh, Aaron recognized me and uh, clued me in that this was going on. So uh, here we are. Um, the there's a there's a statute says that the uh, the school board needs to um, act in in consultation with the select board. There's no definition at all uh, about what that means. Um, there's no there's no case law. There's no explicit. Uh, um, and none, nothing explicit in the statute about it. Um, we had at one point thought that this was a temporary um, uh, measure, but apparently the um, act that makes it a permanent uh, statute uh, is on the governor's desk waiting either for his signature or to be passed into law without it. So um, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's believed to be likely that it will become permanent uh, statute uh, any day now. So um, options that we have, and I guess, I guess, Aaron, I think we might start with some questions to you about your process. And so can you um, help us out with that? And then we'll, and if we have any other questions, we'll, we'll pepper you with them. Yeah, sure. Um, so we have um, three applicants. And so what we as a board do is we, um, as an entire board, get together and just have, we have a discussion. In this case, we had a discussion, I wanna say it was on the 17th. Um, and we had it right after our last meeting. And so in this case, like, it depends on the situation. So if we had like a lot of applicants, what, what our preferred method of sort of doing it is to, um, kind of just try to narrow it down a little bit through discussion with the board um, after everybody having been able to review the materials. In this case, because we have three applicants, we, we all agreed that we'd like to interview all three applicants. And so um, what we then did was we choose a, a selection committee um, and it'll be comprised of, of five members of the board. Um, and so we have set up times to interview each of the applicants um, on May 31st. So, um, and then what we'll do is we'll interview them. They um, all are asked the same questions in the same order by the same members of the selection committee. And then after we do the interviews, we will then get together as a committee 
and then make our recommendation to the board as to who we think would be um, the best appointee. So you've you've shared the documents that um, you got there, the, the letters of intent and our uh, resumes that you've received from the applicants and you've asked us to keep that confidential. Um, that's that's not our typical practice. Um, so this, that's that's a, so it's a, a, a different you have a different method there. My, my question is, are your um, are your interviews also in executive session? Correct. Okay, so the the candidates aren't present for each other's to hear each other's answers either. Correct. Right? Okay, all right, all right. Just wanted to clarify that, and then of course you have your your deliberation about who to choose in an executive session, also. Right. All right, um, board members, any other questions for for Aaron about process? Tracy, go ahead. Just because I'm curious, uh, I do see, as, as Andy mentioned, the school board has not publicly shared the letters of interest. Um, they are in our confidential folder. Um, is it the intent that those will eventually be shared or are those sort of sealed and is it, is it an equity issue that, that those aren't shared or... I guess you I'm know, just, honestly, it's new to us. So I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, you know, um, my understanding, that's, my understanding is that that's how we've always done it. Um, I think my personal stance on it as the chair was just that, you know, this is kind of people's personal information. Um, and so um, I, I didn't see any sense in, in making that public um, because it's something that they're sharing with us to, in a sense, I almost look at it as they're like applying for a job with us, right? Um, and so it's certainly not that we're not, um, you know, we're not trying to be transparent, um, but I guess my take on it is, is that this this is their their personal information um, that they're submitting um, for for this particular position, and so we we felt that it was their personal info and not that we would not share that. Thank you. You're welcome. Already forgotten to unmute myself. Um, any other any other board questions? I would just speak up that it seems rather unusual in the times that we are in that it is such a closed door uh, public position selection. That's all. Just an observation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's generally this. It's been the select board's practice. We've we've had a, a number of. Uh, reappointments and we all the information that's given to us we do redact uh, for example uh, telephone numbers and maybe specifics of addresses and, and those kind of things but um, um, we do make all the information public and we do the interviews uh, in public as well um, and then when we discuss the candidates of course that's in uh, that's an executive session but uh, okay um, so there's, you know, there's a couple of ways for us to approach this. I mean, I, it seems like we get to decide what in consultation with means. Um, we've been given the information. We could go into executive session and discuss the candidates, and we could come out and make a recommendation of, of an individual that we, we, we would prefer. We could do that. It would be, might be awkward if the, the uh, school board hasn't uh, interviewed them yet. Um, the, the other thing that we could do, uh, and this, the Aaron has offered to allow us to appoint one of our members to participate as on the, the, um, the selection committee. Of course, the vote goes to the school board, not to the selection committee. So we wouldn't have a vote, but we would have a seat at the table during the interviews and the discussion. Um, and then the, the other possibility that's been talked about is that we simply sit back and let the select that let the school board go through their process and then comment on their choice. Um, so I don't know what uh, how members are are feeling about this. Anybody have any strong feeling in any direction? We also I, I guess there's another there's another possibility I guess that I should should. And, and, and of course, there may be there may be many, many other possibilities. And if anybody has one, please feel free to, to pose it. We
we could come out and, and it, we could have a discussion and simply say, we don't have any objections to any of the candidates, in which case then we've provided our an input. It doesn't have to be for a specific uh, individual. Um, you know, we could, you know, any, any, you know, anything along the gamut of, you know, comment about um, what our preference might be without even, without specifically picking a candidate, we could do that as well. So Don, I see your hand up, go ahead. I guess my other question would be, couldn't we just authorize the school board to go ahead with their process and we stay right out of it? They know what they're looking for in a candidate, unless we've had, we haven't had hands-on experience currently in the school board, would, could we just vote to authorize them to go ahead? Uh, we could do that, sure. I mean, because personally, I'd rather not get involved in their decision because they're going to have to work with whoever they choose. We don't as a board. It's just. Yeah, there's 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 some history as to why the statute reads this way, in my understanding. Um, there's there's uh, there's there are there will be eight votes placed or, or cast to pick to select the the uh, appointee, and only three of those are from the district that's going to be re represented. And so that's that's why my it's my understanding of why the statute is written to say that the select board should be uh, consulted um, uh, again because most of the folks that will will um, vote on the appointee don't live in the district that's going to be represented. And so um, there, there, there may be some, uh, I mean, uh, 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 you know, an under, underlying issue why we, we might want to take at least some, some sort of position. And, and, but you're right, Don, we could, we could certainly just say we're, and, and that, that kind of goes along with, we don't have any objections to any of the candidates that, that have been posed and uh, we'll leave it to the, I mean, we don't get a vote anyway. So, yeah. Tracy, go ahead. So I would just ask if, if any other board member feels strongly that there should be a member at the select board meeting or on the selection committee? I would say yes, only if there's a member that has children that would be directly affected, it would be a good opportunity for them to participate. Also, you need to be available to participate, right? So, so Aaron, the, the interviews are on the 31st and then is the discussion is immediately after that or is it will there be another meeting for that? The discussion will be right after the interviews. Okay. Is there anybody who wants to? <laughs> Tracy. Well, I, 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 I am a parent in the district, um, but I don't feel as though um, personally, I don't, I don't feel as though we need to have a voice in this. Um, so would it be appropriate to make a motion? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would move that the select board convey to the school board that we do not raise objection with any of the three candidates and that we recommend or authorize whatever the school board to move ahead with their process as defined. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Don. Any further discussion? So um, I have to pause here a moment because we did not take public comment. Um, so although it's generally outside our practice to accept public comment after there's a motion on the floor, um, I do see one hand up in the public. Um, I see two hands up in the public. Um, I'd like to offer them an opportunity to speak as well as the select board. Okay with that? It's fine. Margaret was, had asked a question earlier anyway, so. Okay, uh, Margaret, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thanks. Um, and, and I realize this is out of order with the motion having been made, but um, I'm 
And this feels a lot like what happened on the select board when somebody resigned right after the election. And it feels like, especially if five of the people voting on this are not even in the district. I mean, we voted on those, our candidates. <clears throat> and now our vote's kind of being thrown out. Um, it, it, it just feels very, um, very like political hanky panky. Um, and I'm surprised that since one of the um, candidates was actually on the ballot and did get votes that you didn't just automatically um, appoint that person instead of going through this whole process. I, it just it just feels like it, it's very uncomfortable feeling, especially with people who are not in our district getting to vote on our representative. And I would love to see a, a select board member sitting in on those meetings. So thank you. Yep, thanks, Margaret. Um, I guess to make one thing clear, there is a requirement that their appointment be made within 30 days of the select board being notified of the vacancy. Um, and so there, there really is a, there's a very strict time crunch on that. Um, and so there's there's um, certainly not uh, an adequate time to to warn and hold a, a new election um, in that time frame. Um, and I and Aaron, I'm not. I'm, it's not clear to me that if if well if the if the school board doesn't come to a decision, is there an option that you could could call an election? Um, I'd have to check on that. I mean, I think the new statute actually gives us a few extra days. I think we get thirty. Five for some reason the, okay. I'd have to read it again. <laughs> um, so we have a few more, but um, you know I, I think um, I, I I don't believe that that has typically been done. But, yeah. but I should should preface that also or, or add to that that um, I I can certainly find out. I, I would want it to get some some legal. Um, I'm not aware of it in my yeah. knowledge and my history, but that doesn't mean that it might not have happened at right. some point way back. You know, yeah, so yeah, I can this, find out. Yeah, you know, all, the, all the statute we've passed back and forth is only relative to the the reappointment. Right. It doesn't say mm -hmm. what happens if the. Because yeah. I know, I think it's, I believe it's our the town charter that tells us that if we don't come to agreement, we have to hold a special election to, yeah. to fill the. Seat. I mean, we are charged under this statute to to appoint. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. And Margaret, thank you for your comments. Um, thank you, Margaret. Uh, uh, Lorraine. Hi, Andy. Um, hi, Aaron. Um, a couple questions. Hi, <laughs> this is new to me. So I'm sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd and I want to understand process. Process is very important to me. And I don't have children in school, but I do have a, ner a niece in school. So I do kind of follow along. Um, I was just wondering if some of the genesis. So if I'm understanding, Andy, if I'm understanding you right, there's a new statute that's impacting and why we're having the meeting tonight. Is it, this is not normal. This is the so, first time we're doing this. It's been so, revised. Yeah. So, so it 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 uh, it was a statute that was in, put in place at the same time that uh, having uh, unified districts with, was put in place. Um, this is actually the second time that there's been a vacancy um, on the Essex Westford School District board that has affected us. The first time, none of us were aware of that statute statute oh. <laughs> that requires this. Yeah. And so okay. um, the way it rolled out, and this is, is, is uh, um, Aaron contacted me the, that afternoon that, you know, just before they, they announced who their, who their selection was. And then at, at, was at that point was like, Oh, gee, did we do this right? And so we had some conversation, you know, after that happened. And uh, fortunately, Aaron remind, remembered that uh, they needed to do more than than simply notify us, and that and that we had a responsibility too. And and we we did have some Aaron and I and and um, all of our legal counsel had some back and forth about what in consultation with means. And and there's no there's no clear answer. Um, just, and and I, if I can just interject, Andy, you know, it doesn't help. The statute is very vague. Yeah. <laughs> so it really just right. says you consult, you know. So I think, um, you know, I certainly this is, you know, I think there was just a, 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 my understanding is there was a sense of, you know, certainly we would want to know from the select board if there were any concerns or any objections, um, you know. Um, but I, but I, I think. 
then Andy and I kind of wanted to have a, a deeper understanding with the revision of the statute of, okay, so what exactly does in consultation mean, you know? So, right. so that's where we wanted to say, okay, let, let's have more of this expanded conversation. So this is learning curve stuff for everyone involved. And yeah. so it um, is, and there's no precedent. Right. Right, right. right. So this is very much learning curve and interpretation and legal interpretations as well. So I'm assuming when you say it's, so it's a state statute and is it in the charter then? It's a state statute. Yes. So is it chartered as well? I don't know. Does, so does that get folded into the charter? I wonder even. So, like, so <laughs> there, there, well, uh, 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 charters give you, allow you to have exceptions to state law or additional powers that uh, on top of what state law allows you. Um, so this would just be because, well, because often when you charter something too, you just say, well, whatever the state statute says, you know, right. but you'll have that in the charter as well. So I'm just wondering how that was covered in the charter. And then um, is it just in consultation with the district um, that the one who stepped down is from or is yes. it with all? Yes. So that's the purpose. If I'm interpreting this right, do you think that's the purpose of this meeting then is because in a way we're not getting a vote, but the consultation would be who we voted into office? Yes. Okay. So that's in. And then I, I heard and if you can confirm that, and I don't know if this is statute or policy, that typically, and same for the select board, when an appointment happens, it runs to the uh, um, the next election, but that this particular appointment was going to run to the end of the term. Correct. And so that feels a little wonky to me. Do you know if that's policy or chartered, or if there's a state statute around that? My understanding is that. I, I don't know if the word is, I'd have to find out for you, Lorraine, but my understanding is, um, I'd have to look at the statute and pull it up, but I believe that it is that it, the, so you, this term, this is an existing term. So yep. the term was vacated at X point. In this particular case, it was vacated about a third. So yes. there's about two thirds left of the term left. So yes, the appointment would then fill the rest of that vacated term because my understanding was that that's not the practice in the past that in the, the practice in the past was not to the end of the the vacated term but to the actual the next election so i would love to know the law on that and what i, I would want i want to make sure that's checked on because that's mm -hmm. a long time to let someone to finish out an appointment in terms of not being able to elect someone mm -hmm. i'm sorry tracy you could andy <laughs> I'm yeah. not the chair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, I'm just looking at the statute that we're dealing with, Unified School District, um, shall appoint a person who is otherwise eligible to serve as a member of the Unified Union School District Board to fill the vacancy until an election is held at an annual or special meeting. Yeah, I have. Although it does say unless otherwise provided in accordance with yeah. the articles of agreement, so yeah. so I, we are following the statute. So, uh, but yeah, it, it, it this 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 may <laughs> fall into an interpretation area because the select board interprets that to mean until the next election, exactly. not until the end of the mm -hmm. term, right? So As we've we've I. had a situation right where the the seat that Ethan has right now has had three different people in it in each of its three years because we had a. Um, yeah, because the the way the way it's 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 right. We appointed somebody and that who chose not to run for the third year of that term. Yeah, um, but if you read it, it's until the voters elect a successor at an annual yeah. or special meeting. Yeah, and our so once and our, again, our charter, it's either yeah. or. So our I think that's how the board's been doing it. Yep. But I think you know, so I don't I don't think either one is wrong. Um, I, I I don't think that's the way the board has been doing it, though, Aaron. You might want to check back in the history. And I would love yeah. a lawyer to make sure a lawyer is reviewing that from our select yeah. board as well, not just from the school board, mm -hmm. um, because that it is, that is, a, you know, it. it I know Andy wanting. and I have both touched base with our legal counsel, but we can reach out to them again. And, and, and if you could look at past history as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and Lorraine, in the select board case, we're we're basing what we do on our charter language, which says the next election. So it does differentiate that the next so it doesn't ours, say either or. 
ours explicitly ours. says the next election, right? And so okay. we we appoint for the remainder of the current year with with the uh, an election for the remainder of that term. Right? So the uh, the other concern around all this, because there was so much anger and vitriol, and we've been through the mill, all of us with COVID, and um, and certainly how how who we've seen elected and other things that have gone on and everyone's just so stressed out. Um, it, it also concerns me that uh, we don't, as public, because it is a public position, don't see the candidate names ahead of time because it feels like something's being hidden. I don't need to know a phone number. I don't need to know any personal information, um, but I do feel like as a member of the public, I have a right to know. And I would like that publicized. And I was wondering what's behind, I heard what you said, Aaron, but it is not, a, we're not hiring someone. It's, it's a public uh, office that's normally an elected position. So it, to me, it doesn't really fall under those rules. I hear what you're saying, but I disagree with that in principle because my concern is part of what has happened through all this and a lot of the anger is around the lack of transparency. And part of building public trust is, a, <laughs> is being transparent. And if we continue in that vein, I'm concerned that we will go through what we just went through again. And, and uh, I would like that consideration to be heard in full voice because I'm also hearing complaints about even how public comment is taken when there's hardly anyone there and people are getting cut off after two minutes when there's no one there. When I thought the practice used to be, it was like a 15 minute public comment area and then you would divide it by how many people were there to speak. And so- I just want to make sure we're on the path to being more transparent. And this is not necessarily looking good right off the bat. <laughs> so was your question about the names? Did you say you yes, were I just want to yeah, know the names? They name. were made public. They and were the made names, public, I think, public? about a week ago. I think. And how were they made public? Because they I believe they were um, in a couple of publications. I know at least the Essex Re Retorter because they requested that they wouldn't have been published had they not request yeah. made that public records request. So yeah, I mean, I the, the, right. they were on so, the minutes, I think for this, this meeting as well, they were, they, they've been out in the public. So okay. we, we were not trying to hide the names from anyone. That's all I want to make sure. We were just trying to protect their personal information that they had provided for us. Absolutely. Yeah. I have that's no, all we were trying to do. Yeah. I have no issue with that. And I don't, but I think um, initially we didn't even know the names and that, so that's out there in the public domain now for people who don't follow that they still think that that was a problem was just knowing the names. So I just wanna let you guys know what, the, what we're hearing on the ground um, because often we're in our own bubbles and we don't know. And I just think we're in a weird time and it's just really important to be as transparent as possible and communicate out as much as possible. That's why I see like, you know, kudos to Greg and um, the board for making uh, updates to communication and even allowing the public to opt in to information like that so that when it does go out, we can actually get that information right away instead of having to go someplace to find it. And I think a lot of that stuff with technology today can help squash some of that feeling that's going on out there um, in, a, in a quick manner. So just some public comments. I appreciate you guys being patient with me and I appreciate you kind of explaining what's behind why we're doing this. Thanks, Lorraine. And Thanks. just, just to be explicit, the names are Al Bombardier, Megan Humphreys, and Jemima Talbot. I'm just saying oh, I appreciate so that, that. They, that's so good. They, that, they do that's get helpful into our, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't see any other hands for the public. Um, any other board member comments based on what was what we heard? I would just for a little clarification, they will be appointed for the remainder of the full term versus going through the next annual election. That's the plan. Correct. That's, that's the way the school board is currently interpreting it, but I think there was a request to make sure that that's um, the intent of the statute. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Don? I can give you a little history of when we were the town school board, Aaron. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if when you became a union or joined together, it changed, but um, I served on the board, school board for five, for five years and then left. And then a couple years later, there was an opening because somebody resigned and they chose to make it just one year 
or until the following election, which is just what we do as a select board. And that's what we did as a school board. Yeah, and I know the Essex town might have, because you guys had a different district, they might have done something different prior to the consolidation too. So I can look into that. I just that's the way my it, past experience was being on the um, high school CTE board before the consolidation. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm happy to research that. Absolutely. All right, I would, Aaron. Yeah, I would add to that that I think that would be a very good step towards uh, transparency and really consider having another election at the next annual meeting. Just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the uh, motion um, on the table is to um, uh, indicate to the uh, select board or the, to the school board, we keep getting these board names mixed up, to the school board that we have no objection to the three candidates and to um, um, have them go through their, their normal selection process. Um, any, I just want to make sure there's no further discussion. I don't see any hands up. Don, Tracy's not waving at me. So, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion passes 4 0. Um, Aaron, um, go forward and do your, do your duty and uh, make a good selection. And uh, we, uh, we support what you do. Great. I think we're lucky again to have great candidates. So I really appreciate you all taking the time. I know you just you called a special meeting for tonight. So I really appreciate your time. And, um, and thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And I'll report back to you, Andy, on those questions. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks so much, Aaron. Thank you, everybody. Have right. a good night. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. Thanks. Okay. So let's see. Uh, that's the last business item. We don't need to go into executive session. Greg, you got anything that you need to Want to touch on? No? Okay. We're, I make the motion we adjourn. Okay. Thank you, Don. Second. Thank you, Kendall. It's a non-debatable motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Thank you. We're adjourned.